We had just got into the uh, uh, supermarket and this guy looks at me and he yells out, not saying softly, he yells out, American Occupation Army has just entered. And then he runs away. <laughs> What's good everyone? Welcome to Xchapter Channel. I have a very special guest today. This is Brennan. You've seen him on the channel before. We had a topic where we talked about what kind of foreigner ends up staying in Japan for the long term. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link that below. Check that out. But today we're going to talk about the myth of Japanese politeness. Is it a myth? I don't know. Let's find out. First, uh, Brennan, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. All right, well, uh, I'm a white male. It may not be apparent with the mask on, but... Uh, <laughs> We're trying to socially distance as much as possible in this. And uh, I am originally from California, so uh, obviously I'm not a native of Japan, and any impressions or perspectives that I give today are solely biased from my, my uh, Californian uh, cultural background. Um, Plus, as a, a foreigner in Japan, a lot of my, my perspectives or my thoughts on what is or what isn't uh, polite behavior is going to be influenced by interactions that I've had that are probably more to do with the fact that I'm a foreigner than uh, any sort of uh, lack of politeness in general. So, but uh, yeah, so I am who I am. You so he gave me a pretty good caveat about uh, how far you should take his opinion. And I mean, given the San Francisco 49er plaque back there, we already know how Not poor his far. taste is. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but you bring up a good point that, that we are going to be biased by our particular experiences. And we do experience Japan through the eyes of a foreigner, whether we would want to or not. So, however, that is going to be how most guests and tourists who come to Japan are going to experience Japan as well. In the short term. In the short term. It's uh, certainly true. So I want to know, uh, Japanese have this sort of worldwide reputation as being a very polite people and a very polite nation. And what is your initial take or what is your initial reaction to that belief? I would say that they're no more or less polite than any other nation's people. I mean, from an American perspective, obviously there's going to be some countries that you visit, you're going to perceive them as being less polite and other countries that are going to be more in line with your expectations regarding politeness. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it, from the American perspective, Japan would probably be on the more positive uh, spectrum than the negative spectrum of those countries, but I wouldn't say that they are unique and that they are the most polite uh, people in the world. I think they're like any other people, they, they've got their, their areas where they can be very polite and um, it's a great experience, and then there's other areas where uh, it can be quite a vicious culture and you gotta be careful. But uh, again, you know, it's, it's coming from an American perspective and from the perspective of somebody who tends to be the grumpy old man yelling at people to get <laughs> off their lawn, so. Well, so what you're saying essentially, if I'm, if I'm getting this correct, is that you're going to be viewing it through your own cultural lens and you have expectations coming in on what's polite and what's not polite and Japan, at least for Americans, sort of hits the high notes of politeness. It, it, it would certainly, especially for tourists, as you pointed out, the tourists and those that are coming for short stay, they're, they're going to get a more, I think, superficial look at Japan and for the most part their travels will take them into situations where they will have a high politeness factor. Um, that they will experience. Whereas somebody or, or people like us who are here for the long term, we might have um, experienced a, a bit more of variety in um, 
everyday life and we can we we get a chance to see the parts of japan that really are polite and the parts of japan that maybe are le less polite even from an american perspective but we can't get rid we can't get away from those biases sure well so it sounds like japan might is it seems like you how do i word this so if I'm understanding correctly, then tourists who are coming here, you mentioned they're going to end up in different sectors or, or they're going to be in a certain part of Japan that they're going to experience a higher degree of politeness and that might lead to this greater impression that Japan is really a polite nation. What do you mean by that? What, what, what experience is a tourist going to have that's going to lead to this higher impression of, wow, everyone's so polite. Yeah, well, typically, your average tourist is probably not uh, staying in an in a average suburban neighborhood. They're mm -hmm. going to be in a hotel, and, and obviously hotels and the various industries that work towards serving the tourist industry uh, have standards of service that are going to be required, and even within Japan, within the Japanese population, there, there are high expectations towards those services. So you mm. go to a hotel and um, it, people are, are very polite. It, it, it's part of the job. It's required. Um, most of the time that politeness, I believe, is genuine. If, if you travel around Japan enough as, again, from my own perspective as a non-Japanese, and you are able to make reservations in places that are typically not available to non-Japanese, whether mm -hmm. through your spouse. In my case, my wife does all the reservation making because we found in the past that a my, my language ability <laughs> leads us into sometimes issues. Um, and b, <laughs> have you stayed in some questionable spots? Uh, because <laughs> it, 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 it it would we might not end up staying staying in the places we had intended. Okay, um, but. Uh, be, just because of her language abilities and the fact that she's Japanese, uh, she is able to make reservations at pl places that typically will quite boldly state that they don't do not deal with foreigners. Okay. Um, I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, if you live here, you might have a car, or you know, you're able to access places that way that uh, most tourists. That wouldn't too. necessarily be able to. That's definitely, but I've only had a, I've only recently had a car, or uh, before that only rented cars a few times in Japan. Um, the transportation system in Japan, the, the public transportation of trains and such is so It's going to get you around. everywhere, yeah. the, the um, major tourist destinations where people really want right. to go. That's right, and that's why you wouldn't need to. Right? I, I have to ask though, so I, I found in conversations with you before that mm. this is an area where our experiences have tended to differ. So Japan is actually pretty well known, it's documented even by a Japanese government that there is discrimination against foreigners in regards to housing. Owners of apartments don't have to rent to foreigners and some places will just in front of your face say, sorry, we don't rent to foreigners and there's no law against that. However, in, in the case of my family, I'm the one who does all the reservations mm. because my wife thinks it's just mendoxai, I can't be bothered. <laughs> too troublesome, yeah. Too troublesome. So I've, it's usually me on the phone, it's usually me on the internet websites, and, and I have not personally run into discrimination when trying to find a place to stay. So what, what have, what's happened to you? Well, you know, I have to wonder, part of that before I answer that question is, you had mentioned on the phone, internet, mm -hmm. and how would you know if on the phone you're running into discrimination when they say, hey, we're full up, you can't make reservations, do you know it's because they're actually full up or because you're a foreigner? Uh, well, that, that is true. Uh, I haven't experienced it, a potentially obvious case like that with a hotel. It has happened with restaurants where I walked into a restaurant and the restaurant is literally empty. Mm. And do you have a reservation? <laughs> yeah, they asked, do you have a reservation? And, and we all know, and they're sorry, we're totally full. Mm. And, and conveniently, all of the tables are, are booked up to start in like 
25, 30 minutes yeah. from that time. So, so the, the question lingers in your mind, like, were we just discriminated against and or... I've had that experience multiple times in Japan. But you can't well, so prove it. You can't it. really <laughs> prove it. Um, you don't see the reservation signs out and it's possible they're going to have a big party, but it happens enough times to you and you start to become a little bit suspicious, especially when you talk to other people that have been to the restaurant um, who are Japanese family members who have been without you and such, and they've never had any problems. Um, they've never mm. talked to them and been told, hey, we have nearly full up because of reservations, even if it's around the same day, time. And, and, and again, I'm the suspicious sort. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I've spent too long looking for these types of, of things. Um, but going back to your, your question concerning, uh, I guess, housing, uh, one of the uh, I've had a couple of experiences. When I first came to Japan over 20 years ago, I was in the countryside and I was told outright, and, and they weren't even polite about it. <laughs> oh, really? I was told outright, no, we don't, we don't rent to foreigners because you guys damage. Um, was it, was it a hotel or an apartment? This is actually an apartment. Oh, okay. okay? Um, uh, hotels and such, I, I just don't make the reservations. So I, I avoid that like the plague at this point. Um, I, I did a I did a video on how white privilege is a thing in Japan. Um, having watched a housing agent in front of me leverage the fact I actually said white American oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the apartment owner, like yeah, that, you know, that he's a foreigner, point. but he's a preferred foreigner. Well, well, That's how it felt. My, no, the, my my first experience is their main customers for this rental agency had been Brazilians working in the factories mm -hmm, in this rural, mm -hmm. and they a had a really bad, and the, the agent tr at first when talking to the owner said, look, the, the guy's an American, he's white. And the owner still came back to him and said, he's a foreigner. Mm. And the agent was like, yeah, you're a foreigner. Well, you're to, likely to do To be <laughs> fair, you are very likely to damage things. I am, you know, you look at my office, it's a yeah. mess, so yeah. what could you expect? We're, we are socially distancing as much as possible, but, uh, you know, no, no outdoor episodes today, um, hence the masks, so. Um, and uh, had some discrimination when we were looking for, for loans for a home, um, when we rented, our, when we were looking to rent our first house, um, and I think I had mentioned this previously to you um, in an earlier conversation, the, the real estate agent got on the phone, picked up the phone to call the, the owner, and then he talked to a dial tone. <laughs> And he, he used very polite language when he was on the phone, and then afterwards he was very apologetic to us. And but you knew the whole time. He, he, there, <laughs> I could hear a dial tone. There was there was absolutely no voice on the other end. The man was talking to himself. Uh, so it, it's quite possible the, the owner said, "Look, we're willing to rent, but we're not willing really willing to rent to um, non-Japanese." So to save face, rather than to just tell you outright, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, he put up a charade, basically. Um, yeah, and like I said, he used polite language, he said all the right things, but it was obviously, obviously he's pretty insincere. Uh, my wife was quite perturbed by this, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't particularly happy after I figured out what was going on, but uh, at the same time, that experience hasn't been unusual in the people that I've talked to um, who have done the, the house hunting or the apartment hunting in Japan in the past who are also non-Japanese. Okay, so certainly there is discrimination in the housing market um, and that's, as I mentioned, pretty well documented. That being said, the average tourist experience is going to be in service sectors where you're not going to run up against that. Exactly. And so that can give non-Japanese who've just traveled here a really good impression because, as you mentioned, the Japanese tourist industry standards are so very high are. that, that you know, for, for the local populace, they, the local populace, Japanese demand really good service. Yep. And so... Our expectations are high. And you and can leave... And, yeah, so there, there's plenty of examples of that. And I, that's often what you hear. You hear tourists come away from Japan and they talk about how 
they have these amazing, you know, the stories that they tell are about these amazing service yeah. experiences. And could, could you imagine that happening in San Francisco? No way, that wouldn't happen here. And that's very true. I mean, my own family, and certainly I think my own impressions of the country when I first came here were like that. So you then, you started off this whole thing though by saying you didn't feel that the Japanese were actually any more polite than anywhere else. So where does that come from if if we're leaving these for the tourists uh, uh you know the service industry where politeness is the expectation well, I, i've had a lot of travel experience in the world my, my parents were ex-hippies that really enjoyed dragging my brother and i across the globe when we were younger so we've been to a lot of countries where to be honest the service was either equal or um, even more exceptional than japan service industry uh, Hungary, Yugoslavia, back when it actually was Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. New Zealand, um, there's quite, Austria, I can name quite a few where uh, not only were the people polite, but they were friendly in their politeness. Mm, and so yeah. it goes beyond just the, the feeling of they're doing their jobs, and maybe they were fantastic actors, but it, it gave you a sense of you were uh, not only a valued customer, but they appreciated that you were there and they were happy to have you there. I'm yeah. not saying that in Japan you don't actually find that, but I feel that the politeness in of, oftentimes will build a barrier between that human connection that for me um, rates up there with the highest qualities of customer service, where you're, you're being shown that you're valued, but at the same time, they're showing that they value you more than just for your money. Um, mm. So, no, Japanese service industry is fantastic. I have no complaints about most of the, the tourist industry. Uh, the, the occasional thing that comes up with these reservations that my wife will make when they ask for the names of both people and they realize that one of them is a foreigner, well, they'll say, well, you know, this isn't really the right place for you because we don't serve like hamburgers or something like that. <laughs> um, and my wife, look, he's been here for X amount of years. Uh, he, he uses chopsticks, he eats <laughs> rice. Uh, it will be okay. He knows how to use the, the, the bath. He knows how to take off his shoes, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so sometimes there's a, there seems to be a little bit of persuading going on. And reticence on the other party who maybe are not used to serving yeah. foreigners. Um, and that, that's happened in a couple of usually ryokans, um, uh, the the sure, traditional, traditional inns, and and in areas where maybe they don't get a lot of foreigners. Exactly. Um, well, to be to play devil's advocate, I wouldn't say that's necessarily impolite. It could actually be polite in that they're saying, well, we're not sure we're going to be able to provide the kind of customer service that you would desire as a foreigner. Possibly, but given how my, again, this is based on my perceptions, in this case of my wife's reactions, uh, when she comes away from it, it seems like there was a reticence to just deal with foreigners. They just didn't want, it, it was, was the expression you used earlier, mendoxai. Uh, uh -huh. Dealing with foreigners is, is a, a pain in the ass. It's too troublesome. <laughs> don't want to do it. Um, and it hasn't been for all ryokans. Um, even some ryokans I've been to or these traditional inns I've been to in just really remote areas that don't get any non-Japanese. Um, they've had excellent service. It's, it's just been a few, but it's happened often enough where it, it does show up even within the tourist service industry. So. How about leaving the tourist industry and the service industry, uh, just Japanese in daily life, more or less polite than other countries. Oh, man. I mean, I think, <laughs> for example, the, uh, the examples you might hear tourists come away from Japan with are like, the trains are so clean, the cities are so clean, and no one talks on their phone on the train, and it's so quiet, and, and you know, compared to where, where everyone seems to be in their own bubble back in, in the States. Yeah, I, I have a problem with the assertion that Japan cities are so clean. Uh, maybe compared to, to some countries' cities, uh, for example, when I traveled in, in China during the 
mid 1990s i remember beijing and nanjing being pretty filthy so compared to that yes um but you got to remember that japan does not have public trash cans anywhere right so the parks the gutters the streets are the public trash can there is trash everywhere in the places they live I, I see neighbors of mine that will go around on their morning walks and they'll be collecting trash which i think is a, a great community service but these are individuals that are doing it on their own reconnaissance mm -hmm. um so i uh, i've always found that as fairly disrespectful not only to the city your neighbors and the country as a whole but just <sighs> To, to the beautiful nature that is around you. Japan is surrounded, especially in the big cities, by so many beautiful parks, and people are using them as trash cans. Well, I, did, I did an episode on uh, Japan's strange relation with garbage, and <laughs> I'll link that in the thing below, and it's exactly as you say. There's this, there's this sense that the cities are cleaner, um, and I, I, I tend to think they are when you compare them to a lot of American cities for a, f a few different reasons, one of which you don't have the chewing gum that's been dropped and trod upon, you don't have the... All but the, you have the, the cigarette speckled. butts everywhere. That's true, you do find cigarette butts, and I mean, it's not that the Japanese don't litter, because they certainly do, mm -hmm. but it's more about where they litter. Yeah. And so, if it's in a kind of out-of-the-way place, like, if you drive out of the city into the countryside and you start paying attention to especially tunnels through the mountains the sides of the tunnels are <laughs> clearly places where the people have just taken a plastic bag and thrown it out mm. like they've they've collected the trash in their car but rather than carry it to their destination they've tossed it in the tunnel or off into the bushes yeah. into the forest i mean you, it's also the culture that beaches tend to be really filthy people yeah. don't police their trash on the beaches so there's this weird that there's areas that are of the clean city seems quite clean like the public areas where there's a lot of beat where a lot of people are going to be rather yeah versus um out of the way places where no one's going to see you chuck your trash or it's the except like on the beaches it's kind of the accepted norm that we don't we're not that careful with our mm. with our trash and i suppose um I don't know. You're you're the bigger Japan historian, cultural uh, culturalist than I am. So is that is that the the shame culture? Like we don't throw our trash where other people might see us, but you know, when we're in the woods, it, it's fair game. <laughs> it's it's hard for me to tell with that because I I've lived in s suburbs for quite a few years in Japan, and obviously the nature of a suburb is you have lots of people around you. It's a, it's a community, it's a residential area. Um, we have behind our house a, uh, a cemetery um, and people are there every weekend and they're going to see the, the, the grave sites of their uh, deceased relatives and inevitably they will throw their trash into our cleared yard because it's right across the street Instead of throwing it into the cemetery area, they'll just go right across the street, toss their, their flower plastics, their drinks, their bags of food that they brought. They'll just toss it into people's yards. Wow. And I've complained to the um, police. I've complained to the, uh, the cemetery, and it doesn't make a difference. It's, it's, have you put up signs? Yes, we have signs everywhere. You have... What is it? Three years in prison and 500,000 yen fines. This is private property. Do not put your trash. Camera in um, operation. My next sign is angry foreigner will come at you with a baseball bat. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. The sign would be fun to put up. <laughs> it's It's been a... Um, Have you confronted someone who's done it? Oh uh, yeah, we've chased off a couple of people and they come back like at midnight just to but that's a whole different story. <laughs> oh, there is, there is a, yeah, speaking of Japanese politeness, there definitely yeah. is a revenge culture here oh, yeah. that, uh, you know, that's not, the Japanese are no less prone to anger and revenge than, than anyone else. I, 
just the news this morning, and it's been on the news quite a bit, uh, road rage, mm -hmm. people, who, people who drive like maniacs, you know, someone, well, my wife has told me, even if someone is doing something weird in front of you, you know, don't you dare honk at them, because then they might start coming after you. And that's certainly been a case, there's, there's been news stories about, um, basically cars that'll stalk another car for 20 minutes, like drive, is tailgating as close as possible, swerving in and around them. So you're talking about normal California traffic right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not going to worry me too much, but yeah, there, there are definitely more. Well, but when it's targeted, I mean. Oh the, no, that's the, still normal California traffic. Okay. <laughs> well see, there you go, cultural lenses coming from the Midwest. Oh. Uh, yeah, not not. I, that's not so much my experience coming from Wisconsin. Um, yeah, the, the road rage incidents, incidences in Japan don't really worry me too much. Uh, the first week that I moved into my house, uh, people like to leave trash on our um, video stand thing. The, for just the first week, people would put coffee cans. They would put uh, bags what of trash. What do you trash. mean by video stand? Uh, you know what the. This is hard for me to explain because it's only in Japan that I've, I've experienced this. You have like a, a cement box and embedded in the cement box are two things. Your nameplate, foreign name, and a video camera that has uh, the doorbell. So the, the doorbell camera. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's, it's, it's about a, a meter and a half high. Mm -hmm. and about 30 centimeters wide or something like that. And so it makes a nice little shelf and no other houses in, on my street have this done. We'd asked our neighbors and they said, oh no, that's, that's strange. We've never heard of anything like that. We've never had people put trash on our, and it was the first week, just the first week of being there. And we had a lot of the neighborhood kids want to come by and press our doorbell and run away, which was really stupid because it takes a picture of the person as soon as you press the doorbell. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. And that's the norm, so they should know that. And you would think, yeah, yeah. so we got a lot of that. Um, so it was an interesting experience. But um, you had asked about uh, other non-tourist industries where politeness may be a, a different factor. And I would say it is different. For example, the trains that you had talked about, this idea that people are silent. Uh, when I come in pretty early, there's a lot of people sleeping. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people have their phones set to an alarm, and those alarms will oftentimes go on for quite a while because the people are so deep asleep. Mm -hmm. um, later on in the day when I'm commuting, you have a lot of people with blaring headphones that you can hear across the car. You have people that are having loud conversations. I, I didn't do enough train travel in the United States to really make the comparison, but to me, Japanese train commuters for the most part are a fairly rude bunch. Um, they can be aggressive, they can completely ignore the rules and manners of daily society. Um, mm, for me, yeah. it's a very stressful experience. I do not like getting on, on the trains. It's, it's not as bad as in the really crowded Tokyo area, but... I think, I think there's an element there that, unless it's one of those things that when you come here as a tourist and you think, I want to experience that famous Tokyo rush hour once, and you and you wake up at you know s 7 a.m. and get on the Yamanote line or something like that, and you experience it. I think tourists on their way to their tourist sites aren't going to be on the trains at those times, and typically not. You, you get you get a little bit of of uh, a, a different sense of of the train commute. I, I I would agree with that in that if you not ridden during the rush hour and and see how you know people are people are going to work they're grumpy they've they were up too late last night they had to go drinking with clients whatever it is yeah. you're going to find a lot of fairly rude behavior yeah. i would say though that my experience it's one of those reverse culture shocks whenever i get back to the states is uh, you get on a bus which we always we always have to ride a couple of buses from the airport before we get to our destination and that's the first thing I notice is that people have gotten off their airplane they got people to talk to and it's just blah 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 the entire bus ride mm. and that that's just not a uh, 
a thing that is as common or as open in Japan. So the, having the conversation on the phone is something that Japanese communities definitely do less. Okay, and I could, coming from California, it's, it's a car culture instead of a public transportation culture. If you take sure. public transportation, you're probably not getting where you want to go. Um, <laughs> so, but my experience in Japan, it's been, there's a lot of phone conversations. Um, there, there are more people that try to cover up their phone conversations and then they whisper extremely loudly. Um, uh, conversations between individuals uh, when it's non-commuting hour. Commuting hour, uh, people are individually going on their own. There, there's no group. We're all going to work together. Uh, other hours when it's not so much commuting and you get those groups, then it's just chatting, 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 chatting. Um, oftentimes very loud chatting. I, I remember once I was on a train leaving from here and I had got on and there's one of my students and we were talking in English and we were actually at the end of the train and we were talking in pretty low voices. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty conscious on trains of we're supposed to be quiet. Yeah, that, That's the expectation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that expectation holds most of the time but that's, I don't talk loudly. Um, I, I worry about it. Uh, just like I, I try to scrunch myself up, up in, and not take up much room because I realize I'm bigger than a lot of other people and I don't want to in, uh, impose on their personal space, etc. But I was talking to this young woman, there is some Japanese further down the train that you could hear quite clearly they're having conversations, it was very loud. And the guy who was sitting near us in, in Japanese just said, yeah, Rusai, loud, and then he's. Just, I hate English. And uh -huh. he, he says this all in Japanese, and, and my student apologizes to him. And I was pissed, because we certainly weren't talking, and we were a lot closer to him than this other group, but the other group was a lot louder, but they were speaking in Japanese. So uh -huh. again, this is why I, I, I say that a lot of my experiences are through the lens of being a foreigner. I, I get this, uh, we don't like the foreigner, or, or they're, the, the foreigner is breaking some sort of rule that the Japanese are allowed to break. Um, mm -hmm. So that's where my maybe Japanese for me aren't as polite as the image in the world projects uh, is coming from. I don't know. Sure. Uh, well, there's, that, that's certainly an aspect that if you come here and you don't speak the language or you don't speak the language yet, you're not going to notice <laughs> you uh, might miss certain, certain, some of these certain you know, people uttering under their breath. Yeah. Or, I mean, I've had that experience where I was on the tr train with a friend. We were, um, we were just heading somewhere and we were both sitting down and these uh, s small group of Japanese got on and, and, and there were seats next to us and one of that, I mean, I overheard one of them say, oh, I don't want to sit next to foreigners. <laughs> so, you know, it, and if I wasn't able to understand the Japanese, I would have just thought, oh, I guess they don't want to sit down, maybe they're getting off the train soon or mm -hmm. something like that. So you're going to miss some of those things if sure. you don't understand Japanese, that's certainly true. Um, but I have to say that, and I, I think, I almost want to move this to the beginning of this video because it's the part that I think everyone needs to hear. Um, and you have seem to have had a very unique experience with meeting the crazies. Yeah, yeah, I track the crazies like uh, uh, Because we, it's, it's, I can't tell you how many times I've come in to this office and we've had a conversation and I've heard a news story about the weirdos that you've had to interact with who have been, you know, basically messed with you. And it's a completely different world I mean, our Japan seemed to be worlds yeah. apart because I don't get the kind of treatment that you get. I don't get the kind of experiences you have. As I mentioned, I'm even with the making hotel reservations, you know, I'm on the phone, so it, it's clear from my Japanese I'm not Japanese. Yeah. And not, I, I've never been told no reservations. Let's, let's put it that way. I've, I've, they've always been accommodating. Maybe I haven't gone to as wildly rural places as you have, but but I have not had near the experiences that you seem to have had. Could you could you share a couple of your your favorite <laughs> favorite? <laughs> well, I'm not sure if these these are necessarily get into the whole 
politeness factor. And eventually, you have to start thinking, maybe it's me. <laughs> um, given the the number and the nature of these encounters, but uh, well, are there some that you feel are examples of maybe the Japanese aren't as polite oh, as yeah, the stories? I, uh, I, I think I mentioned to you once we were coming, my wife and I had just gotten off the plane at Narita, we were coming home, um, this is in the good old days when we actually had to go to Narita, and it, it's, it's significantly further than Haneda Airport, and uh, we were sitting down on a bench, and this is an odd bench in that it had um, uh, a little divider between two of the seats and then the rest of the bench, and my wife was sitting next to a, um, uh, a, a fairly small person on the two seat section, and then I was sitting on the other side of the divider next to my wife, and but my wife was closer to me, kind of where the divider was because you know she was leaning against me. We were tired, coming home, and this uh, well-dressed couple at the time they they looked middle-aged to me but now at my age i don't think of them so much as middle-aged they're our age yeah they're our age um well very well dressed the woman had pearls on the guy was um dressed in kind of a polo sweater thing and a gold rolex watch etc um and they they got on and the woman asked me in japanese would you mind moving over um, she must have been talking to both my wife and I, so we would scoot over to make room. So my wife would have to move closer to the person in the corner. Remember, there's only enough space for two people, but the person sitting next to it was small. And then I would somehow move through the divider, um, or sit on the divider, I don't know. Um, but anyway, and then they would have enough room to sit down, mm -hmm. two of them. Maybe, it'd be a tight fit. Um, I thought I'd be polite and try to scoot over even more against the divider, so I was basically going like this, but I had nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. um, and it wouldn't have mattered if my wife moved because I wasn't going to be sitting in the middle of the divider. That would be an uncom uncomfortable trip for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the woman sat down next to me while the, the husband continued to stand, and she said in Japanese to her husband, I should have known the stupid foreigners wouldn't understand what I was saying. And my wife was furious. I understood enough at that point, again, this was a long time ago, that, that I was pretty angry and I moved over and pointed at the divider. And uh, the husband started apologizing profusely and it's okay, let's not get into a fight, blah, blah, blah. And the wife was just, huh. <laughs> and, and you know, the, that type of behavior isn't, hasn't been all that uncommon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've got other stories that are more of the crazy variety than the impolite. The guy who comes into the shopping mall sees me with a... I, I actually had a, um, a blue Japanese Naval Academy hat, or, or baseball cap on. Okay. And the guy sees me... That's and kind my, of a r random item. I didn't know you had something um, like that. Uh, I, I used to like... Japanese military paraphernalia oh, yeah. uh, or, or uh, things with the symbols on them, uh, just my, my interest in history, etc. But I had this on and it was Japanese and and we had just got into the uh, uh, supermarket and this guy looks at me and he yells out, not saying softly, he yells out, American Occupation Army has just entered and then he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> And I stopped, and I looked around, and other people just kind of looked at me, and then they went back about their business. And <laughs> it was okay. And by that time, in my stay in Japan, I'd had enough of these incidences. I was like, he hasn't attacked me. He hasn't invited me home to dismember me. Uh, <laughs> okay. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, I, there's, there's certainly, I mean, there is that element that, uh, yeah, has nothing to do with yeah. politeness or impoliteness, but... As a foreigner, we stand out, yep. so people who are going to be a little bit odd, uh, we become an easier uh, target. Like there's, I mean, it doesn't always happen. There's, there's uh, a number of people, because I think there's a school um, down where I live, that where I take the train, and there's a number of 
regular writers who I think go to this special school mm. um, because they're always talking to themselves or like there's one that's shouting all the time. But thankfully, they've never. I, I, at first, I was afraid they were going to zero in on me, like, oh, I'm going to stand out and I'm going to be the one they want to shout at or whatever. Yeah. But um, thankfully, that hasn't happened. Um, I, unfortunately, though, for you, it seems that you get that almost on a weekly basis. Um, it, it hasn't been nearly as often once I hit, I think, about 43 or 42. Maybe there, there was some magical age thing involved, I don't know, but... Um, you, I, your gray hair saves you? Uh, I've always had gray hair, so I don't know. Um, but I'm no longer meeting people that are telling me about their bicycle or uh, motorcycle riding accidents that cause them to have amnesia and only be able to speak English. I'm no longer meeting the doll collectors that wanna want me to come home to, to, see, their doll to see their Barbie collection after having <laughs> met them one time on the um, that's train. That's my personal favorite story, the yeah, doll lady. That, um, that's, uh, mm. I, I yeah. was with my wife and her cousin at the time and they were both sitting there as this woman was talking to me and they both ignored me completely and at the end they said we didn't want to get involved <laughs> <laughs> and i was like thank you thank you very much i would i would have been distancing myself from that uh, that conversation as well yeah. Um, um yeah i've had more of the experience of people wanting to talk to me because i'm a foreigner and wanting to like you know either do some english practice or or uh, just a couple weeks ago, this guy's like, hey, I, I do organizing at a local community center. Would you do an English class for our community center? I mean, I get that for a, And that's for what I long. expect as soon as somebody starts talking to me in English. I think, oh, this is just somebody that wants to practice a little bit. And then it quickly goes off the rails. <laughs> um, so mine don't go off the rails. This is why I say we live in different worlds, because mine don't go off the rails. I've had, uh, I, can, I can think of exactly one experience where uh, I ex I got basically berated, shouted at by a Japanese person who wasn't all there, um, and because the person that he he was with this woman who very kind of apologetically apologetically bowed and mm. sorry this is the way he is sort of thing, um, and so I didn't you know that's not going to bother me I'm not going to feel like I was discriminated against no. or that. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna come away from that with a bad impression of Japan. No. But uh, then there's your world, which is you're just a magnet. I am. I, the, the whole people yelling out in the supermarket. Uh, another example, uh, w which can be taken as uh, I suppose a little bit rude. But at the same time, when it happened, it was kind of funny. Um, I walked into a supermarket in my wife's hometown, which is a rural town, and. And a woman across the, the supermarket, um, she screamed out in Japanese. She said, Atou-san, kaijin da yo! Which is, uh, husband, look, there's a foreigner! <laughs> and across the entire supermarket, she spotted me and screamed this out so her family could come running to take a look. And I know that there's at least one other foreigner that occasionally is around that area. Um, I mean, two foreigners out of yeah. s something like 8,000 people, but uh, um, if you want to go back to the topic of uh, maybe a, less of a crazy encounter, more of a rude encounter, one of these tours that my wife and I did um, where it would have been very difficult for me to have t found this place because of my, my Japanese ability, she found this great Kyoto tour where it was pretty much off the beaten path for the most part it was senior citizens they only went to um the non-popular sites like um, mm -hmm. temples or shrines that were only open for a few months they tend to be on the smaller sides less well known and so we were on this tour and we're the, with the same people all day long and there was this one guy that at the very first stop it was um what was it? I think it was a, a small temple and they were known for, I want to say their calligraphy. But in any event, I was more interested in the architecture and mm -hmm. I had a camera around my, my um, neck, but I put it away as soon as I saw the signs that said no photography. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the signs were conveniently in both Japanese and English, but this 
gentleman decided to come up to me in English, he asked, do you speak Japanese? And I said in Japanese, yeah, I speak a little bit of Japanese. And he stopped and kind of looked at me, and then he continued on in English. Welcome to Japan. No photography. The big butts in my face. I mean, really close. Yeah. And I said in Japanese, yeah, I can read the sign. It's both in Japanese and English. Uh -huh. And he just looked at me again like I was speaking German. And my wife was starting to get a little bit annoyed. And she said, he understands. He could read what was written. And he looked very proud of himself. He smiled. Thank you. And he walks off. This, oh, I'll say imbecile, to be nice about <laughs> it. Later on, we were in a section of this temple where the, the wood paneling was something like 200 years old. And there's no touching signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. He is opening up these wood panels, closing them, running his hand down them. And he's doing everything he can to ignore the signs to the point where the food tour guide finally turns to him and says, look, we're going to have to kick you out. You can't do that. Um, but, you know, it was... He, he was trying to make sure that I followed the rules, yep. even though he wasn't kind of following the Well, there, you know, there is an honest uh, pressure sometimes, I feel, as a foreigner, that I have to more strictly follow the rules than the natives. Sure. Because yeah. if I don't, then I stand out and it, yeah. and then it becomes like I'm a representative of foreigners who can't follow rules. Mm -hmm. And for example, just the, the crosswalk, the yeah. <laughs> crosswalks, I'm, well, there's actually a couple reasons why I don't disobey crosswalks. Um, the, but one of them is because I don't want to be like, oh, see, uh, that foreigner doesn't follow the rule yeah. of the red light, even if there's no traffic coming. Yeah. The other re the other two reasons why I follow it, well, I always follow it, especially if there's children around, because it's like, sure. I want to set the example. But the, the second biggest reason why I always follow crosswalk signs is because um, I, I once almost got a guy killed, basically. Let's put it like that. I, I was looking, there was no traffic. There was a car coming that was coming kind of fast, mm. but I was like, oh, if I walk normally, I'll make it. And so I started across. The guy next to me on his smartphone, unaware that there's this car coming, <laughs> um, and unaware that the light hadn't actually changed, just started, oh, he, I, he must have caught me out of the corner of his eye and just assumed the light has changed and he bumbled out. And I had to, I had to be like, oh, but I, <laughs> I had to actually turn around, like go back and be like, no, 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 we're, we're not going. I don't know, that, that's, that's Darwinism <laughs> in action. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I don't want, I don't want a pedestrian sure. death on my conscience. Just, sure. Just, if, if we, if we, uh, if we thought that every person who's on a smartphone is worthy of a Darwin Award, then uh, that would be 90% of the population. The population would certainly decline a lot. Foreign, and, foreign and domestic. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you, there's this extra pressure that, you know, I'm, I'm extra quiet on the train. I'm, like, like you mentioned in your own story, you don't, you're extra aware mm. because you don't want to be that foreigner. Backpack to the front or backpack goes up. You yeah. don't wear it on your back, and if you're passing by people, you probably bow, see my son, see my son. Right, and on a, on a crowded train, mm. like where you're actually really packed in, both of my arms are up. Yeah. Because I don't want I don't want there to be anything like he touched me. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I my arms are up like this, even though most most Japanese people don't do that. Yeah. Um, and it's also I don't know about you, but uh, we're both. A little bit larger than the average size Japanese, so for myself, I, I you always more than me, but yeah, I always feel a little bit. Uh, I don't want to put anybody out. I don't want to invade their personal space. So I try to collapse my body as much as possible on crowded trains. So I am taking up absolutely no more space than the next person next to me, even if they are only two thirds my size. Um, whether I'm sitting on a, a chair or standing in front of a, a, a the, the bench, it doesn't really matter. I, I try to fit myself as small into the space as possible. So, mm -hmm. um, and I find that that is a rarity. <laughs> yeah. Most people are not doing that. Most people don't care. They, they will bump you, they'll run into you, they'll never say anything, they'll be wearing their backpack and be 
dancing with their music so they're constantly hitting you. I've seen other Japanese will sometimes turn around and call them idiot, stop hitting me, yeah, uh, yeah. type like that, but uh, you fear doing that a lot of times as a foreigner, although not, not as much as I used to when I was younger. Um, you fear making any sort of comment uh, because you will be perceived. That's right, you'll be causing a scene. Oh, look, just another angry American. Yeah. Yes, yes, I am an angry American. So now you're just owning it. Yeah, at, at this point, <laughs> uh, um, I people that push their way on the train ahead of a line when people are still trying to come out, I will grab them and I will pull them back. Um, I, I, I won't let them get away with it anymore. And that that is rudeness in itself. But I got tired of seeing old people get pushed down or little kids get pushed down just because they didn't move as quickly as the person in line wanted them to so they could get rush onto the train to find a seat. Yeah. Um, you're in the back of the line. You're not getting a seat. You should have got here earlier. You know, the rest yeah. of us are standing politely we'll in wait line. Wait for the next train. We'll wait for really the next train. Sit. Yeah, that, that's... I, I commented, I did a video just last week, my, my most recent video, where I said that Japanese punctuality culture also involves not really a, being a rushing culture in terms of like when you walk from the station to people don't walk like no one's really in a hurry rush but that is definitely the exception yeah for whatever uh, on reason. the train people are so desperate for a seat that that all politeness goes out the window it in those is situations. really strange because it's an excellent observation from train to home or train to work People are, as you mentioned, the cell phones, they're taking their time, they're very leisurely, and, and you'll occasionally see maybe a, a kid rushing or a salaryman or a woman rushing, but it's, it's a rarity. The, yeah, it's not the norm. But you get on the trains and suddenly it's uh, Lord of the Flies, you know? <laughs> I'm surprised I don't see people going around with sticks and other commuters' heads on them. Um, mm -hmm. It can get pretty vicious. <laughs> the elderly it can be vicious. I've almost had my feet broken a couple of times because I was not apparently moving quick enough to get on the train. Um, uh, yeah, I've, schools, I've, I've had the hand in the back. I've had the, the you know, uh, getting my heels stomped on. Sure. Um, but I mean, and, and not necessarily because it's so crowded, it's unavoidable. No, it's no, just, no, no. Just the person behind you is like, I gotta get off. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's not about necessarily the crowds. A lot of this happens on relatively uncrowded trains. It comes to a stop, they just want to get off. They're going to rush out of the station and then suddenly they downshift into a lower gear and take their time. Yeah, um, It's never quite made any sense to me, but again, uh, I'm from California, we didn't take public transportation. Maybe my perspective is just warped. Yeah. So. No, that's true. I When I did the video last week, I, I didn't have the train station in mind. If you're, if you're driving, you're just used to how the traffic is, so you, you factor it into your commute. If you're, you know how long the walk is from the station to your office, so you just, you factored in that time, so you're not rushing to the office that way. It's just uh, the train station. Everyone, everyone gets a little, not everyone, but a, a, good, number, a good number of people get a little <laughs> bit loopy. A lot of people. Um, yeah, Lord of the Flies for a seat. That's, that's kind of it's like it's like it is kind of like those games of musical chairs when you were a small child. And, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, the music stopped. Like everyone, you know, you got to yeah. rush into that seat. Maybe maybe musical chairs shouldn't. They they do play that in Japan. Maybe they shouldn't. That's tr I, the wrong I think training. They, they need to get rid of that game. Um, they they don't need to be training children for that. Because uh, um, it can get violent. Uh, I've seen altercations because two people ram into each other trying to get the seat from opposite ends, uh, ignoring the old person who's standing right there who's about to try to sit down. Um, well, my favorite is the people who rush towards the seat next to me and then realize I'm a foreigner and then like casually, oh, I meant to stand here the whole time. <laughs> I've rushed over to stand at this spot. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's always fun. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Not yeah. sure I, I want anybody necessarily to sit next to me, but... Uh, yeah, in your case, it might be someone crazy, so you maybe yeah, don't want that to happen. Yeah, it could be. And luckily, the last time I had a crazy, it was it was a real... Uh, I thought I was in, <laughs> my life was in danger, or at least my freedom would be in danger. But after that, it, things calmed down. It was just the normal 
rudeness factor and, and the occasional uh, racist that you run into. So yeah, I was I was telling him last week that I think an interesting vlog to do would be to follow him like a like a nature photographer. You know, just just in the, surreptitiously in the background, follow him on his commute and catch some of these crazies in the wild because. I just want to see it because, as I mentioned, this this kind of thing just doesn't seem to happen to me with anywhere near the frequency that it happens to you. I mean, there were a couple of stories that you told that that reminded me of certain things, but mine tend to be tamer or cuter. For example, <laughs> in the in the supermarket, you mentioned the person yelling, "the mm -hmm. the American invasion mm -hmm. occupation is here." Uh, for me, it was just remembering like when I'm away from my shopping cart. This is before I'm married, but when I'm away from my shopping cart, catching a little old lady kind of looking through, like, what, <laughs> what, what does the foreigner buy? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cute. Yeah, and, and I'll never forget being out for a run in the early morning and running past a guy walking his dog, and it was one of those Shiba Kens, a Japanese breed. And as I walk by, he turns to the dog and says, Gaijin da yo? How's that? Like, like, my the dog, mind, I think the, the dog knows, oh, it's a foreigner. Right? I think the dogs do know in Japan. I think the dogs are probably, yeah, you're right, that is a foreigner. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm a huge fan of the Shiba Ken. I think they're one of those dogs that... Uh, they're awesome. They have a they have a interesting independent streak mm -hmm. that, at least where I live, there were a bunch of neighborhood dogs that their owners would just let them out, <laughs> and they would wander the street. And, you know, what I, my image of a dog is that they're either... They're either aggressive towards people or they are really friendly towards people. Mm -hmm. But these Shiba Ken were just like, they didn't care about people. You'd be like, hey, dog, and the dog would be like, I'm just busy. keep going. Uh, some place to be. Yeah, that, that, those dogs were, were <laughs> cool, cool, uh, cool customers. <laughs> I was going to say cool mother, mm -hmm, but uh, I, I can't swear on my channel. So. <laughs> you could. But. Yeah. Well, I, I guess... The last thing I want to ask, is there anything you wanted to add in terms of... So we've, we've established that once you get used to life here, you, you're not going to... You're no longer going to necessarily have that impression that Japanese are more polite than anywhere else. I think you made a point at the beginning that they're not any less polite yeah. than elsewhere. So we're not, we're not saying that the Japanese are... You know, we just went through a bunch of examples that were kind of extreme. So that's yeah. not to say that Japanese are then more rude. It's just no. that no different than anywhere else. Anything else that you want to add to that? Uh, I think it's fascinating though that historically Japan has been, uh, not just within this century, but for probably about 400 years has been viewed by Western visitors as a polite, civilized country. Um, mm -hmm. Jesuit um, monks in the 16th century visiting would write about how civilized Japan was more so than many of the Western European countries that they came from. They, they, they would write these glowing reports that people are hygienic, they're polite, and some of the times I wonder if it was just the, and this is the way off into my own opinion with no evidence to support <laughs> it, um, uh, the Western expectations of bowing being connected with royalty. Mm. Um, but that doesn't hold water because these other, these visitors could also have visited China uh, during the same periods and didn't have very nice things to say. Um, uh. But then again, the cleanliness factor oftentimes for the Jesuits was a big issue. Um, and, and Japan... Uh, Japan at that, was traditionally much cleaner yes, than Europe. Much cleaner. Uh, and much cleaner than most of the other Asian uh, neighbors. Mm -hmm. So. That, that to me was always an interesting factor. Why has Japan been this country that has been viewed so highly both in civilization as well as politeness for centuries? Teddy Roosevelt loved Japan. Teddy Roosevelt, not, not just the, the, the idea of Bushido and such, which was kind of created uh, or the idealized version that came to the West was created for him and, and his uh, buddies, but he, he loved the spirit of Japan, the, the people's attitude towards life. So it's just centuries of, of 
belief that Japan is a higher level culture and so it's on par with the West. There's a there's been a, a ongoing sustained PR yeah. campaign that Japan is very very polite. Yeah, and I think it's it's fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. Not yeah. fascinating enough for me to uh, research it. research it myself, but you know, it's, it's, with uh, all your free time, with all my free time, I'm yeah. I'm really thankful that he actually sat down to do this this podcast because. Uh, He's a, he's hard to pin down. If he's, uh, if he's not if he's not working, he's interacting with crazy people. You, uh, yeah, the crazies <laughs> the crazies keep me pretty busy. You, you actually uh, and, and apparently you cleaning the garbage out of your yard. Oh, Jesus, man. Yeah. One of these years. Yeah. <laughs> You'll read about me in the newspaper. Crazy foreigner <laughs> yeah. snaps and kills a bunch of people because of the trash. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I I again our neighborhood. I've never come across trash in our yard that had been left there deliberately by anyone. Um, granted, we don't live close to anything that the public is accessing, like, mm -hmm. like the cemetery, so there's, there's, it's not like we're next to a park. If we were next to a park or if we were next to a community center or something, maybe that would be the case, uh, but, but uh, um, I, you know, we're just in the middle of, a, middle of a block. One more story that I've got to tell. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is kind of a mixed one. It's not a crazy one. Uh, the first must have been the first year that we had moved into our new home. We have a staircase going up, and along the staircase is planter boxes, cement planter boxes. Okay. I've got nice plants and such. And I came home one day, and I found somebody had pulled out all my newly planted flowers and just tossed them on our staircase. Um, and wow. they, they had moved some figurines from our neighbor's staircase over on top of ours. I was pretty sure I knew who did it. Some of the neighborhood kids who had kept on running through our yard and, and throwing trash and doing the whole doorbell video thing. Um, and we called the police. You know, this is probably about $200 worth of plants that they had ruined, uh, made a complete mess. My wife was very freaked out. Um, somebody yeah. had vandalized our property yeah. and the neighbors near us like nothing has ever happened on this street before and the police came and the first thing the police did they asked to see my identification they asked me are you legally here and is this your house we had called the police because of vandalism they were very polite about it um, they didn't ask to see my wife's ID Mm -hmm. They just wanted to see my ID. Uh, my wife was... Did you, did you comply? I have to legally. I will go to jail if I do not. They do not have to give a... They have to give a reason for searching you. But if they ask to see the, your, your foreign registration and you do not give it to them, they can legally take you to prison. Um, so I went up to my house. I kind of was, what is this about? Came down, gave it to them. They wrote my information on their little sheet said, yeah, this is probably just because you're a foreigner. Shogunai, what can you do about it? We'll patrol a couple of times just to make sure. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So, but they were very polite about it, insincere in their politeness, but uh, sure. it, was, it was an interesting experience. It certainly woke, woke me up to where I stood in Japan when it came to the law. So. Mm. Yeah, that, that would. It makes you think twice about calling the police if they're just going to say Shogunai but then hassle you. Um, you know, I, I've called those same police, basically you're calling a police box. I've called them uh, again since then because of the trash and things like that. And at this point, they're like, not necessarily buddies with me, but they recognize me. Oh, yeah, how's it going this week? Anybody screw with your property? Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. He's, see, it looks like somebody destroyed that. Oh, that's too bad. Have a good week. <laughs> like, great, thank you very much. Wow. So, they're, they're, um, they're usually good. They'll, they'll patrol for a couple of weeks, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. At any rate, so I want to thank you for taking your time. I know you have an appointment coming up um, with someone, so... I think that's a fairly decent place to wrap up. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for doing this Always again. Pleasurable. And I want to thank everyone. If you've made it to the end of this video, you've come this whole way, uh, please remember to hit that like button. And that's still the number one way that gets my videos out to a larger audience. So if you're even friends and family of, of,
Brennan here. Hit that like button to help out the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. I drop a new video about Japanese life, society, and culture from someone who's been here 15 plus years. Every Friday, a new video comes out. So please watch for those. Thank you so much for watching this one, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.